If everyone would take their seats, if our uh, dais members and participants would prepare, we're going to begin uh, sharply at 2 o'clock. I'm uh, Congressman Matt Gates, and I'd like to call this field hearing in Florida's 1st Congressional District to order. And we're going to begin in prayer. We have with us from NAS Whiting Field, Chaplain Tillerton. And Chaplain, thank you for being here. If everyone rise for a moment of prayer. Let's pray. Most gracious and divine creator, we approach your throne today with thanks and praise. We thank you for this day in this great country that we all call home, the United States of America. Lord, I humbly request your presence here today. I pray for your guidance. Give us hearts focused on unity. May this meeting be one of transparency, honesty, and humility. May we all remember that we are members of the same community, country, state, and nation. God bless those in attendance here today. Bless this nation. Bless those who are on the tip of the spear defending all the freedoms that we enjoy, our allies, and bless all who so support our nation's first responders and military. Give our leaders, warfighters, and first responders your divine wisdom and protection. May we all be blessed with your spirit of peace, and may we all work together with the spirit of unity, for the common good, and may your laws rule supreme forever. We ask this and pray this all in your most holy name. Amen. Amen. Please remain standing for a presentation of the colors from Troop 153 from Pensacola, as well as the, uh, the Pledge of Allegiance and the National Anthem uh, by my friend Reed Soria. Please present the colors. Say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight or the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the home of the brave. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated.
From time to time, members of Congress hold field hearings around the country to create intense focus around issues of great importance. This will be the third uh, such field hearing that our office has been involved in. We initially held a field hearing in Tallahassee in, con in concert with Congressman Dunn regarding the threats and risks associated with China's theft of intellectual property. We brought together academicians, business leaders, and policymakers from both sides of the aisle, and we created a series of recommendations that were provided to substantive committees in the Congress and the Department of Commerce and others in the administration. Subsequent to that field hearing, we saw major change in policy towards China, whether that was through the National Defense Authorization Act, which changed the protocols for foreign investment and companies that are involved in our defense supply chain, to changes in our trade policy with China so that China would not be able to economically get maximum advantage when U.S. innovators were the victims of intellectual property theft. The second field hearing we held was uh, at uh, NAS Pensacola at the wonderful Naval Aviation Museum where we talked about the threats and risks associated with Iran's malign influence through terror proxies in the Western Hemisphere. Uh, the information that members of my team gleaned from that hearing were very instructive as we con continued to highlight the importance of the work that the 7th Special Forces Group does in our district in combating Iran's malign influence in the Western Hemisphere and subsequent to that field hearing, it was actually just a couple months later, the administration made the decision to pull out of the Iran, nu Iran nuclear deal so as to not provide a cloak of legitimacy for those activities that Northwest Floridians are having to confront downrange each and every day. Today we come together admittedly with a bit more of a parochial interest, and that is the mission at Whiting Field. Uh, Whiting Field is a crown jewel of the military mission in Northwest Florida. It is a bedrock of the economy in Santa Rosa County. The mission at Whiting creates tremendous training opportunities and is essential to the activities throughout our armed services to ensure that we've got pilots with the capabilities to go downrange with the adequate training necessary to complete their mission. To preserve the mission at Whiting, we should not simply assume that because it is here and because we are proud of it, that it will always be here. It is my expectation that other communities, that other branches of the service might want to, at one point, concentrate this training activity elsewhere. If that were to occur, it would not only be devastating to Northwest Florida, but I believe it would jeopardize the mission because we need all of the assets that we've built here in Northwest Florida to ensure that the types of training that are required by the syllabus are able to be executed with, great, uh, with, with a great level of confidence and with consistency. And so uh, we've brought together today uh, policymakers from the federal level, the state level, and the local level, because it is my belief that a concentrated, focused effort from our entire team will ensure that the mission at Whiting Field remains strong and that throughout Northwest Florida we are able to continue uh, to, make, um, to make great headway in attracting even more missions. So I, I want to start by uh, recognizing a few of the people that we have here. We have a State Representative J.R. Williamson, uh, Santa Rosa County Commissioner Bob Cole, uh, Santa Rosa County Commissioner Sam Parker, Santa Rosa County Commissioner Don Salter, Santa Rosa County Commissioner Rob Williamson, Sheriff Johnson, Dan Schlebler, Captain Mark Murray, uh, Pete Gandy. We also have members of my Military Advisory Council uh, here uh, who will be making uh, presentation or who will be asking questions. And this is very important. The way that we make decisions in our office is oftentimes by seeking the counsel of one of the greatest assets we have in Northwest Florida, and that those are folks who have led, uh, who have retired and chosen to live here, and can really be a force multiplier for the eff efforts of our congressional staff. And so we have uh, Admiral Kelly, uh, who uh, always helps us in our interactions with the Navy. Uh, General Highholt may be joining us soon. General Highholt has recently taken on the responsibility of chairing uh, the board that makes recommendations for military academy service uh, in our district. So uh, a new job for him. Mr. Bill Roan, who is a budget guru, uh, from, uh, served at Eglin Air Force Base and throughout the, uh, the, uh, the service, um, the civil service, and uh, helps us 
dive into a lot of the spreadsheets. Uh, Colonel Heal, who in addition to his service in the United States Air Force, now has a, a very significant portfolio when it comes to private sector defense investment in our district. Colonel Rob Carrillo, who previously served on my staff and also uh, previously was a commanding officer for the 7th Special Forces Group uh, bed down here in our district. And then last but not least, uh, one of our new members of our Senior Advisor Board, Major Dan Zofke. And, uh, the Major also served with the 7th Special Forces Group and is assisting our efforts today. Uh, presenting uh, to us, uh, we will have uh, Captain Murray, Senator Broxson uh, from the Florida Defense Support Task Force, Amy Newburn from the Haas Center, Dr. Harper, from, uh, who is an economic advisor with Triumph Gulf Coast, and also making a presentation will be Commissioner Salter. Uh, so I'd like to begin, before we get into the presentations, just with a, a basic overview of why it's so exciting for us to be proud of the mission at Whiting. So let's go ahead and play our introductory video. We'll go to our PowerPoint. Laura? All right. There we go. All right. Commissioner, do you know how to go to the next clicker here on these? I have been filled in on this right side. Right side? Hmm. Maybe. See when we find Laura? There she is. Which, uh, oh, there we go. All right, now we're, now we're live and moving. Great. So uh, the objective of our field hearing is to certainly develop a strategy going forward, but I wanted to give a brief overview of some of the high points in the National Defense Authorization Act. We just passed the conference report of this year's NDAA this last Thursday uh, before returning to our districts for a work period, and it's important to recognize that while the prior year's National Defense Authorization Act increased funding dramatically for our military, the consequences of sequestration were so severe that we will not be able to dig ourselves out of this with just one influx of cash. This is going to have to be a multi-year sustained effort to rebuild the defense capabilities, to rebuild the supply chain capabilities so that we recover from the effects of sequestration. So here you see some of the top line increases across the Army, aviation, uh, sea power, and, uh, and military construction. Uh, there were specific wins for Northwest Florida in this conference report that I want to be able to highlight. Uh, first is the nearly $32 million increase for Gulf uh, test range enhancements. The Gulf of Mexico test range is a huge leverageable asset for us. It is unique in all of the world. It is the only place where we're doing live fire testing over water that can then uh, impact land for the next generation of hypersonic and supersonic systems and a lot of the weapon systems that are being used downrange now. This 32 million is on top of nearly 40 million that we got uh, appropriated and authorized in last year's National Defense Authorization. So it'll be around 70 million dollars uh, during the 150 15th Congress. This is the first time we've had congressionally directed funding to improve the telemetry and radar systems at the Gulf Test Range since Bob Sykes served as the congressman for this district. Uh, we also have new classroom buildings for the F-35 mission at Eglin, new dormitory for the F-35 mission at Eglin, and this is really exciting. Uh, also at Eglin, 38 million for the construction of cyberspace test facilities. In addition to being able to contribute to the fight today, I think it is really an important strategic imperative that we be looking toward the war fighting domains of the future. 
and making sure that in Northwest Florida, we're preparing for those domains as well. And so to be able to have a continued investment in our ability to, to uh, interact in the cyber domain, I think really uh, positions us well. Uh, more specifically uh, for the subject of our discussion today, we, are, we got a $10 million authorized uh, to repair the North Control Tower at Whiting. This allows us to attract and grow mission there, in addition to these other uh, really important Whiting upgrades and uh, military construction enhancements. Uh, the House passed, a, uh, now one of the big challenges we have at Whiting, and we're going to discuss it later today, is one of the airframes that is principally used is the TH-57 uh, helicopter. And during my visits to Whiting, as my staff, as senior advisors have joined me at Whiting, it is deeply troubling the extent to which these aircraft are giving error messages to our pilots on, on almost every other day uh, interval. I mean, there is actually a truck that they have to use to go and get these TH-57 helicopters and drive them back to the base, and this happens almost every other day at Whiting. Almost every other day, there's a helicopter that takes off that has to come back on a truck. And I've had the command staff at Whiting say to me, these helicopters are the exact same aircraft that they trained on when they were young pilots. And so it is really an important uh, obligation of ours to highlight the safety concerns and also just the logistics concerns when you've got pilots training on an analog system and then moving to a digital system where they will ultimately be downrange. And so we fought hard to accelerate the replacement plans for this TH-57 aircraft. We got a million dollars allocated in the House version. Unfortunately, the Senate does not always agree with the House, and that did not make the conference report. However, what did make the conference report is uh, this report language in which we've taken input from the Navy, and it is my expectation that the TH-57 will be replaced with a commercial alternative. So uh, I think it's very likely that there is a commercial alternative to this. Um, we've, we've gotten input from all sides on this as, uh, you know, as opposed to other uh, types of procurement, and ultimately, the procurement process for a new aircraft takes so long, even for a training aircraft, my concern is that we could have shutdowns or challenges in meeting the training syllabus at Whiting if we do not accelerate uh, with, a, with a procedure that would go a lot faster than the, than the normal procurement. Uh, we also had support in the NDAA for these, uh, these digs, these defense infrastructure grants. We've benefited from a, no a number of those and will continue to do so. So uh, that is kind of the quick and dirty on that which we voted on last week. But uh, I want to now move into our presentations highlighting the importance of the mission and then getting deeper into what we're doing and how our strategy can be coordinated at, at all levels of government. And I'd like to start by recognizing the Assistant County Administrator for Santa Rosa County, Captain Mark Murray, for a presentation highlighting the mission at Whiting and its importance to the national defense infrastructure. Well, thank you, Congressman Gates, and uh, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Uh, a couple of those videos, I think there might have been a shot of me on centerline at T-34 uh, landing. I see an old friend out there, Greg Merck. Uh, Greg and I were uh, squadron mates once upon a time in a squadron in Jacksonville, Florida. Um, but uh, you know, it's a privilege for me to get a chance to talk a little bit about why whiting is, uh, is so important. So a little bit of context for you. Uh, I grew up in uh, upstate New York. Uh, father was uh, drafted uh, into the Army in Korea. Uh, I was on, a, on the way over to Korea. When the war ended, he returned home, released from active duty. So no real draw on my family to military service. But uh, I was an engineering student at the University of Buffalo. And I ran into a fellow engineering student. He talked about this thing called the Naval Aviation Flight Training Program. And you know what? It was not too long after uh, Top Gun had come out. And bottom line is it just sounded cool. Um, I talked about uh, the options following college and uh, decided I would submit my application. Fast forward, uh, reported down here to what we used to have was called Aviation Officer Candidate School down at uh, NAS Penn School. Uh, Staff Sergeant Jimenez was my uh, drill instructor back then. He attended my retirement as a retired Sergeant Major. Uh, this was a very small world. Uh, trained up here at uh, Whiting Field, the VT-6 and an HD-18. Uh, and then following uh, earning my wings of gold, reported to uh, HSL Community East Coast. That's where Greg and I first met. Uh, fast forward about 15 years after that, uh, I had the good fortune of coming back to Whiting Field. This time, November of 2007, uh, as the prospective executive officer for HT-18. 
Uh, and I think really during that tour, when my XO and CO tour at Whiting, uh, at H, actually at HT18, is when I realized just what a special place it was. The reason is when you're a flight student, you're pretty much heads down the whole time, uh, and you don't realize just what a, what a great, uh, great location it is. A little bit of context for you, too. Uh, the uh, brief show of hands, nobody on the official panels, but out there, how many people have ever heard the phrase, uh, Pensacola, the cradle of naval aviation? Yeah, a lot of hands, right? Absolutely. Okay, uh, by the same show of hands, how many pilots do you think we trained at Naval Air Station, Pensacola, Florida? Anybody think we trained pilots down there? Yes? No. The answer is zero. Uh, and the reason is training Air Wing 6 trains naval flight officers. Those are the men and women uh, who are the weapon systems operators uh, in our aircraft. Uh, Whiting Field, uh, by contrast, is where we train pilots. In fact, of the five training air wings uh, in the Naval Air Training Command, uh, Corpus Christi uh, has two squadrons for primary flight training, and Whiting Field has three. So we at Whiting Field are responsible for 60% of the training of the future of naval aviation. Uh, primary flight training now in the T-6 uh, is approximately 28 weeks long. And then based on uh, their selection uh, as far as what they would like to fly in the future uh, and their performance, uh, we decide different pipelines that they're going to pursue. Uh, but again, 60% of all naval aviators start their flight training uh, at Whiting Field. If they select helicopters, they come down uh, probably the easiest uh, PCS or permanent change of station uh, duty orders they'll ever accept, which is about uh, 300 yards to the other end of the base, uh, to Southfield, uh, where we train every Navy, Marine Corps, and Coast Guard helicopter pilot uh, in the fleet. Uh, three helicopter squadrons, once upon a time, we only had two, uh, in, a, uh, in a very old helicopter, as the Congressman pointed out. Um, and he talked about the truck. Uh, we have an affectionate term for it. It's called the truck of shame. Uh, when, the, uh, when the helicopter breaks, you get in the back of the uh, F-250 with the smoked out windows, and so nobody even realizes it's you that's in the back. And you ride that truck of shame back, uh, back to Whiting Field. Um, you know, we, we talk an awful lot about, uh, about what we do up at Whiting. Uh, and, I, and I tell you, from my perspective as, uh, as the uh, squadron CEO, and then most recently in my tour as the wing commander. Um, it is a very busy place, uh, but it's not so busy that we uh, forget that we're doing the most important thing, which is handcrafting the future of naval aviation. Uh, these men and women following uh, their training uh, at Whiting uh, move off to advanced pipelines and strike multi-engine, tilt rotor, uh, or in our case here at Whiting, come down to uh, the south field and uh, train in helicopters. Uh, once they receive their wings of gold, uh, it's, a, it's a great day, uh, life memory for them. But then they move off to the next step in their training, which is just beginning again, and that's to what they call their fleet replacement squadron, where they'll learn to fly and fight their fleet aircraft. Anywhere from six to 12 more months of training, uh, and then they'll report to their first duty assignment in the fleet. Uh, usually three to four years of, uh, of uh, fleet duty, including multiple deployments, uh, countless training. Um, and to think, it all started right here at Whiting Field, uh, a place just a few miles north of where we are right now. Um, took a look at the Naval Aviation vision recently, and I want to quote for you to give you a little bit of perspective. Um, from the vision, uh, Naval Aviation forces are forward, engaged, and ready every day. Expeditionary forces, amphibious forces, nuclear-powered aircraft carriers, air wings, manned and unmanned platforms, rotary and fixed-wing aircraft are on station, valued, and in increasingly uh, higher demand. No other service or community can deliver the capabilities Naval Aviation brings in support of our national interests. It's a national priority to sustain, resource, and ultimately expand these capabilities to ensure that when called, naval aviation is at the hold short, takeoff checks complete, and ready to go. A brief look at uh, where the Navy is today. Uh, we see that uh, three aircraft carriers underway, the Carl Vinson, Abraham Lincoln, and John C. Stennis, as well as three amphibious assault ships and all their other support ships associated with the Essex, the Iwo Jima, 3,700 uh, aircraft are operationally ready today. Uh, that is a large number, uh, and again, it all 60% uh, of it starts right here. Um, some of these folks that are out there in the fleet will eventually come back here to Whiting Field in an instructor role. Uh, talk about full circle, talk about an opportunity to come back and train the next generation of naval aviation. Uh, incredibly rewarding. Uh, and I will tell you that when an instructor leaves this tour here at Whiting, uh, 
they tell me for a fact that it was the most valuable tour that they had. Passing on the knowledge, skills, and experience of the next generation. But it's not just the instructors. It's every civilian, uh, every person that works at Whiting. And having served there twice, I can tell you, it's indeed a very special place. Uh, we care deeply about what we do up there, and the partnership that we have uh, with Santa Rosa County is unmatched. Uh, I can promise you it exists nowhere else in the Department of the Navy. Uh, I'll close with this. We just celebrated our 75th anniversary uh, a week ago. Uh, it doesn't matter uh, who you are or how you measure it. 75 years of doing something is an awfully long time, but we do it exceptionally well. And it reminded me, in uh, 2004, uh, movie star Nicolas Cage uh, uh, was released. It was called National Treasure. Uh, he followed a treasure hunt all around, basically gets to the... Uh, um, the Declaration of Independence, hopefully for the final clue to find this treasure of untold riches. Uh, I ask when you leave today, you walk out those doors, turn to your left. Uh, on the wall, you'll see a poster, uh, and it basically says, N.A.S. Whiting Field, our national treasure. Um, I would, uh, can't think of a better way to summarize uh, my passion for Whiting Field, and I know it's this county's passion and also the congressman's. Um, I really believe that uh, that national treasure is critical to the defense of our nation in the future. So, Sir, thank you very much. Thank you. And what we'll do is we'll get all the presentations out, and then I'll want to give the opportunity to our advisory board to ask questions. So if you have questions of a presenter, I would say just take a note, and then we'll sort of do all those as a panel discussion. Uh, thank you for that presentation. And uh, next, we're going to have Senator Broxson and Mr. McCaffrey uh, walk us through the work of the Florida Defense Support Task Force, uh, and particularly as it relates to Whiting. But for those who are unaware, Senator Broxson has served as chairman of the Florida Defense Support Task Force, which is a statewide organization intended to ensure that we continue to be the most military veteran friendly state in America uh, during uh, Chairman Broxson's tenure in that leadership role. We have racked up a number of these wins because Florida has had a strategy to go out and grow the mission and protect the mission we've had. We, we are the envy of the country in this respect. My colleagues on the Armed Services Committee are always asking what the secret is in Florida and it's that I think we've got this coordinated effort that, uh, that uh, Senator Broxson and I worked on when we were in the legislature together. Uh, Representative Williamson and his colleagues have helped fund. And so uh, thank you for, the, for your leadership and for helping us uh, score some of these wins. And I, I yield to you, Senator. Thank you, Congressman. And it's an honor to be here. And what we want to do today is to give you the tools to go back to your colleagues and tell them how well Florida is doing in our military gains. You know, for years, agriculture was the number one economic uh, driver in the state of Florida. And then in the 60s, when Disney moved in, it changed. It shifted to tourism. And the military was somewhere down in the top 10. For the first time this year in 2018, agriculture has dropped to number three, tourism number one, and the military number two. Soon, we'll have over $100 billion given back to our economy directly related to our military mission. It's ironic that in 2011, a senator from a county who has two-thirds of his economy driven by the military would introduce legislation to create the task force that you and I have served on. And Senator Gates did that knowing that there was something about sending a unified message to Washington that we were doing it right. So what does the task force do? It meets with the commanders of every base in the state of Florida. It sends a message that we are, in every base is as important as Whiting. Now, Whiting is very important to us, but if you were to take one of these bases out of the economy of any county in Florida, it would have a tremendous impact. So our goal is to be the listening ear of everything military happening in the, in the state. Governor Scott has been very proactive in visiting with the base commanders, and we go to every base in the state. We rotate year in and year out to make sure that they know how important they are. It's my honor today to have Colonel McCaffrey here that will give us some detail of what this group has meant for Whiting Field. And Whiting Field is a gem, not only here. People don't realize that it's the busiest airport airspace in the U.S. Now, for those of us that go through Atlanta, 
think he gets busy. Imagine that our little space here is the busiest even more than Atlanta. So Terry, if you would, go, go through some of the things that are related directly to Whiting Field. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you, Senator and uh, Congressman Gates. It's great to be here. Uh, just want to first start off with saying I have a soft spot for Whiting Field, uh, even though as an Air Force guy, I uh, was a commander of T-6 squadron and had uh, Navy and Marines in my squadron. So a lot of opportunity with the T-6 and glad that you guys have it here now. Uh, and I think that we could bring more down here and uh, do more here at Whiting Field with the T-6. Uh, great training platform uh, and a great facility here to execute that mission. Uh, the state has invested a lot into Whiting Field. And so overall, it's been uh, $5,494,321.20 and all kinds of different grants. Uh, the task force and through uh, Enterprise Florida managed most of those grants until recently, uh, but that includes military based protection grants, DRGs, uh, defense reinvestment grants, and defense infrastructure grants. Uh, and the task force specifically has executed three grants uh, to Whiting Field or to support Whiting Field in the $221,000, almost $222,000. Those three projects uh, were one to Santa Rosa County to build a fence to separate NS Whiting Field from the new aviation park, which I think we're going to hear about more in a sec. Uh, so that was a, a, a big deal to get that started and, and uh, hopefully spur that investment that's going to come. Uh, secondly, we gave a grant for $20,000 a little over uh, $20,000 for site clearing to improve force protection at NAS Whiting Field. That was always important, and I know there's more to be done uh, in that arena of force protection, setting up the base for that. And then finally, uh, about $41,000 to update the 2003 land acquisition study and, and complete a uh, phase plan to limit encroachment on the field. Uh, of course, uh, most of our bases were in the middle of nowhere when they were set up here, and uh, as always happens, things build up around them and so encroachment at every base in Florida is a major issue and uh, for Whiting no different. Uh, but uh, I think the, the state of Florida has done a, a good job on making sure that, that Whiting is uh, protected and important and there's obviously always more that we can do and uh, the task force through Senator Broxton's leadership uh, we're doing every day trying to make that happen. And I'd be happy to answer any questions later that come up. Great. Thank you very much. And, and uh, it definitely is music to our ears when the state of Florida is pumping over $5 million into hardening our mission and supporting it and working in concert with our local government. So it, it really is not something to gloss over. It's something to highlight and, and uh, certainly thank you for your leadership, Senator Brox. And we know a lot of that's a consequence of your good work. Uh, so now I want to move from the state's investment in the community to sort of the importance of the installation uh, to our local economic picture and the Haas Center at the University of West Florida uh, often serves as our oracle for uh, the economic impact of everything and so uh, Amy Newburn is here to give us a presentation thank you for being here hi well I'm on am I on okay perfect <laughs> um, thank you so it's a pleasure to be here with you. I think you have to hold that a little closer. Can you hear me now? Yeah, there, that's Excellent. better. Excellent. <laughs> so it's a pleasure to be here with you guys. Thanks so much for uh, having us. Uh, as you know, the Haas Center is a research and consulting arm of the university. And uh, we have a long history of doing impact research with the military. And uh, this is a, a pleasure to have done this study just to add to that, quantifying the value of the military in our area. So uh, I just want to give a little bit of context. This study was done uh, by using REMI, an economic impact modeling system. Uh, there are a lot of modeling systems out there, so it's important to, to just uh, notate that. There we go. Uh, so I first wanted to start about the economic impact of employment. Um, that Whiting Field brings to Santa Rosa County specifically. So because of the presence of Whiting Field, there are more than 24,000 people that have been involved in the labor force each year. Uh, more than 11,000 of uh, those are directly attributed to um, the presence of Whiting Field. And of those total jobs, nearly 7,000 of those jobs are found in the private industry. If you look at the bottom, that shows you the total that 
would exist over a 10-year period. Uh, it said it is important to notate that these are not net new jobs. So for example, if a contractor holds a job this year and next year, those are two net new jobs in that bottom portion. Uh, and you really can't stress enough here that that's a huge presence of private industry uh, when you look at that nearly 7,000 jobs attributed to that, uh, much more than just the servicemen that are, are located at Whiting Field. And I just wanted to give a small breakdown of where those private industry employment uh, is located. So you see not just retail and healthcare, your typical service providers, but also construction. So you can see that additional growth is happening uh, because of the presence of Whiting Field. And 29% uh, of these jobs are within the government sector, but uh, they're not just military. So 10% are uh, military employees, but you also see uh, the civilian workforce and state and local jobs that are supported by Whiting Field's existence. And so I want to then look at the total impact of the economy. And so uh, 1.9 billion, that's a pretty big number, that's output. Um, and what that means is the total amount of sales. Um, I typically prefer to focus on GDP or the value added, uh, and that's 1.2 billion to the local economy. And in a single year, you would see 1.29 billion additional in personal income that can be attributed to the presence of Whiting Field. But when you look at that over a 10-year impact, that is a substantial portion. So $20 billion in output that can be uh, you know, connected back to the presence of this military uh, base and uh, $12.6 billion in GDP and nearly $22 billion in personal income. It's important not to just look at it from dollars in jobs, though, but that also Whiting Field has an important uh, role to play in the population of Santa Rosa County. So when we were modeling this, uh, that includes a loss of uh, 9,100 retirees if Whiting Field did not exist in Santa Rosa County. Um, you would also see uh, the presence of contractors and federal civilian workers diminished. Um, you would also see that uh, same ripple effect with military dependents, so that's nearly 3,000 school-aged children, but also military personnel um, who we know, of course, if the base is not here, they would not be here, but so many of them do stay in the area. 87% of those personnel are 40 years old or younger. So a potential uh, resource for employers in the area when they are considering relocating. I wanted to just touch on a potential opportunity. When we're thinking about quantifying uh, what already exists here at Whiting Field, we can see that's very clearly um, a large economic impact to the community. But we also wanted to consider if there were room uh, in this area for growth. And so what we did was look at the potential for the Corpus Christi training wing uh, if we were able to absorb some of that into Whiting Field. Uh, so the Corpus Christi, they do 600 new pilots a year. Uh, just by looking at that uh, amount and the support staff that comes along with it, that generates in one single year nearly another 1,200 new jobs, and another 520 of those would be private industry. Uh, you would also see nearly 4,000 people come to Santa Rosa County in new population, and that's 82 million in value added to the economy. Now, I will say here, this is a conservative estimate because it doesn't include, for example, the defense spending that we know would increase for Whiting Field if this was to be absorbed. But I did want to give this as an opportunity uh, to just think about ways that Whiting Field might be able to grow into the future and add to its already substantial value to Santa Rosa County. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, before Dr. Harper gives his presentation, uh, you will recall, Commissioner Salter, we gathered for a little huddle during my last Open Gates Day here in Santa Rosa County with some of the members of the economic development team uh, for the county. 
And, uh, and during that discussion, it was your belief that, that really uh, we ought to lean into the private sector opportunities. You know, a lot in the way Amy just laid out, that's where the growth can be and that's where we see a real uplift in the local economy. Uh, I then met with, with uh, Representative Williamson about the possibility of, of Triumph getting involved and he agreed that throughout Santa Rosa County this investment in whiting would be one of the most important things we could do for economic security across a variety of platforms. I think that uh, Representative Williamson is very well founded in what uh, what Amy laid out and so now what Dr. Harper will walk us through is the Triumph Gulf Coast grant that has already been voted on and approved that goes and fulfills some of those uh, discussions that we'd had previously. So with that set up you recognize Dr. Harper. Thank you, Congressman Gates. Um, I think uh, Triumph Gulf Coast is likely familiar to most people in the room. Uh, the synopsis, the brief version of uh, what uh, Triumph uh, is and does, it's uh, established in Florida statute. Uh, there is a seven-person board uh, at Triumph consisting of local businessmen and women uh, who make decisions uh, with the advice and support of staff. And I'm here today as a staff to Triumph Gulf Coast. I serve as the economic advisor. And Triumph is funded by uh, the damages, the economic damages money from uh, the Florida settlement with uh, BP. Uh, that total settlement uh, that was uh, signed off on several years ago uh, amounted to $2 billion. Uh, the Florida legislature uh, passed uh, uh, statutes, uh, certainly with the help of uh, many people in this room, uh, then Representative Broxson, uh, certainly uh, then Representative Gates, as well as uh, Senate President uh, Gates, uh, passed legislation calling for three quarters of that $2 billion award uh, to be spent in the eight coastal counties of Northwest Florida in a grant program designed to grow and diversify the economy of Northwest Florida and to bring economic benefit to the families who are resident in the eight westernmost coastal counties. And so that's what Triumph Gulf Coast is about. It is now uh, working to distribute the first tranche of $300 million, which was the initial payment by BP, uh, well, $400 million to the state total, $300 million of that came to Northwest Florida to be distributed by Triumph Gulf Coast, and it is the first of 15 payments over 18 years. We all in this room have a stake in supporting uh, the Florida legislature in the appropriations process as it continues to send that money to Triumph Gulf Coast to be used for the benefit of Northwest Florida. Now, to date, Triumph has funded uh, several projects. It's entered into commitments to fund those projects, beginning with recommendations by staff to directors. Uh, we have uh, six projects currently that have been recommended for funding out of a total of 150 pre-applications and about 42 completed app full applications. Those are being considered uh, and with respect to the economic impact as well as the date that they arrived. Uh, and I have to tell you, for the reasons that have been mentioned already, staff found the Whiting Aviation Park proposal to really be an easy sell to the seven directors of Triumph Gulf Coast. And there are several reasons for that, uh, uh, those that have been already mentioned, but this is a high wage project. The wages that will be associated with the jobs that come to the Whiting Aviation Park um, and we're talking here about the first 40 acres to be developed of the 267 acres that the County Commission has worked so hard to, uh, to bring uh, to the greater benefit of Santa Rosa. But these are high wage jobs. Uh, the expectation is that there will be at least 200 jobs that pay more than 150% of the prevailing county average wage, which those are just super jobs. They're in the highly coveted Aviation Aerospace Targeted Industry Sector. It is one of Florida's key target industries. And with this expenditure, it's hoped that Santa Rosa will be able to service those uh, helicopters that have taken the uh, ride of shame back to Whiting Field, service them here at home instead of having them trucked once again off for major maintenance. Uh, some, I understand, are trucked as far away as St. Louis, depending on the need. Um, this will then make Whiting Field um, 
more competitive uh, in the key aviation aerospace target industry sector and will let Santa Rosa join existing operations in Okaloosa County, uh, certainly L3 at uh, Bob Sykes Field, and Triumph uh, has also voted to fund expansion of maintenance repair overhaul facilities at Pensacola Airport uh, for uh, commercial and other clients there. And so we hope to build the MRO sector, industry sector, across Northwest Florida. And of course, something that's already been mentioned that resonates with the Triumph directors is the opportunity to guard against possible loss or threat to military missions in the rounds of base realignment and closure that we know will come as the military becomes even more technology oriented and less oriented towards uh, land area and bases uh, for housing troops. And so protecting against BRAC is a key uh, objective. Uh, the commitment by Triumph is $8.52 million to build out the first 40 acres of the industrial park. That matches an existing commitment that the county commission and others have made of $9.2 million, bringing the total value of the project to $17.7 million. Um, and with that, I yield. Thank you, Dr. Harper. And, and I think as much as any of the presentations, that really highlights the importance of our intergovernmental cooperation. For, for us to continue to sock away these wins for Whiting, you know, we've got to have the local county commission making a commitment which has occurred. Uh, we've got to have the county highlight to triumph Gulf Coast these priorities because in state law, the recommendations of the county commission must be considered by the triumph board. So your support there uh, helped draw down those monies. And then, you know, you're looking at eight and a half million dollars from triumph local directors that are even more than the over $5 million for Whiting that, that Senator Brocks and, and Representative Williamson have worked in through the legislature. So if there is a, if there is a community objective here for us to all um, ensure that, that we work on and advocate for on our behalf, it is to ensure that the state legislature continues to fund Triumph Gulf Coast, that we all triumph this victory on behalf of Triumph Gulf Coast to our legislators uh, so that, that, that those flows of investment can continue to occur and that the projects that are funded work in synergy with the national strategy. So you hear the expansion of commercial capabilities at the Pensacola Airport and here at the Whiting Aviation Park, and that is aligning with the federal objective to move to a commercial alternative for the aircraft. So uh, that, is, that is really the importance of that sustained focus. But before um, our military advisors were going to ask panel member questions, I wanted to start with Representative Williamson to give you the opportunity to explain the importance or the strategy from our legislative delegation standpoint in highlighting the good work of Triumph Gulf Coast and also the fact that that work is not simply on behalf of some particular business, but on behalf of a prof an economic profile in Santa Rosa County that, that consistent with Amy's presentation and Captain Murray's presentation is, is the bedrock of our local economy. So I'll, I'll yield to you for, for any suggestions or sure. advice on how to support your efforts in that regard. Thank you, Congressman. And first of all, I just want to say thank you to Commissioner Salter because he, I said on the commission for two years and I'm glad to be back in this building I'm glad it's not a rezoning meeting um, that's uh, that's a big plus but uh, you were committed to this project from the very get-go when it came to Whiting and it, and it was a it was one of those things that was you got a dream big type idea and, and you, you dreamed big about what we could do at Whiting from the commercial sector and you had a lot of people that maybe thought you were dreaming too big and you've had commitment from all the board members that, that I served with the ones that are here um, today you've had commitment from our new commissioner from District 1's uh, Commissioner Parker and the environment that we've created in Santa Rosa County a lot of it goes back to your early work so I appreciate that um, it's always been an honor to be your friend and to, to have served with you but Triumph Gulf Coast is so important for um, for our for our economy for the future of Northwest Florida it's one of the greatest things and opportunities that we have I mean it was a horrible incident that happened the, the reason that we have this funding but it's the greatest opportunity that we could have for the next 30 or 40 years or maybe even longer um, and the, the biggest thing that we can do and, and make sure 
that the projects that we have in place, that we have wins right out the gate. And I think that um, widening is going to be one of those wins. And we talk a lot about this funding. Um, I know that Senator Broxson and I, it's probably something that every single day we wake up and we think about Triumph funding because it's not over yet. Um, anytime there is a pot of money uh, for hands to get into in Tallahassee, those hands are going to be trying to get into that pot of money. So if there's anything that I can do as a representative, um, I certainly will do that. And I know Senator Broxson will do the same, that we can secure that funding for the future. Um, but the best thing that we can do is have people like Commissioner Salter and the rest of our board here um, keep that line of communication open. I appreciate you having this here today because these things don't just happen by chance. Um, and widening and the vision that we've had there and, and the luck and the um, the positives that we had the last 30 years with widening. It doesn't happen just by chance. It happens because you have a com commitment from locals, from local officials. You have a commitment from local business people as well, the chamber, which supports the mission so strongly out there. And the communication lines have to continue to be open. I know they will be from my office. And just thank you for having this today. Well, and I know, uh, Representative Williamson, that so much of the focus on the accountability for the Triumph funding is related to jobs, appropriately so. But here we seem to get double bang for the buck because not only are we doing right by the economy, but we're doing right by our national defense strategy. And so in your efforts to highlight not only the, the raw economic data, but, but it's sometimes the kind of the unquantifiable uh, enhancement of Florida's position as the number one military state in the country. I will volunteer on their behalf uh, the service of my military advisors if you need them to sign letters, make phone calls, uh, you know, occasionally appear at a hearing in Tallahassee. I know there's nothing that, that they would be more willing to do than to say uh, as a consequence of their work with our office that, that this is an important endeavor. So. You may be hitting the road, fellas. But uh, Commissioner Salter wanted to yield to you next. Thank you for bringing us together many months ago on this, for keeping us focused on this, and, and talk to us about uh, your advice for next steps and how we could continue to build on, on, uh, on your great vision. Thank you, Congressman. First of all, I want to thank you for everything you do for Northwest Florida, but especially our military. And that includes Pensacola, Santa Rosa, Okaloosa, and Bay County. Uh, you have been a tremendous supporter of our military, uh, not just for uh, the air traffic control tower you talked about earlier at $10 million, all the range improvements in Okaloosa County, the Triumph Fund that you helped support, that was extremely important. But I want to thank you for fighting for the men and women of our military and fighting to get them raises, uh, hopefully in this year's DOD budget to make those men and women feel more important. So thank you for that as well. If I know how to operate this. I also want to thank Senator Broxson. Uh, he's a good friend of mine and we talk from time to time and big supporter of the military and Representative Jay Williamson has said he sat here as a county commissioner and he understands the local issues and he's a great advocate for us to have in Tallahassee as well. So thank you. I want to thank my fellow commissioners for all the years of support of Whiting, Avia Whiting Field and Whiting Aviation Park. If I can figure out how to operate this in the back. Just a few things about Whiting Field and why we as a county have done what we've done. In 1991, 1993, 1995, and 2005, they were all base realignment and closure years. Uh, people like Jim Bryden, Phil, and myself, we and Pete Gandy, we actively participated in all of those BRACs dating back to 1991. And the thing that we learned is throughout all of those hearings and those bases closing, you better protect your fence line and you better protect your airspace, and you better protect your water ranges. If you'll do those three things, you'll be in pretty good shape. 1998, we assisted in the establishment of the Florida Defense Alliance to assist local communities with Florida Defense grants in protecting their bases from encroachment. Prior to that, we were kind of left out of the picture when it came to state funding. Uh, other states like Mississippi, Arizona, California, they were putting millions into base protection and we had zero. So we'll, once again, we want to thank our state, state representatives. Uh, 2004, we adopted and implemented the Joint Land Use Study. And what that consisted of, we sent letters to all 4,000 landowners around NAS Whiting Field. 
For helicopter activity, we looked at everything within a half mile radius and the outlying fields as well, I'm sorry. And for the air, uh, airplanes, we looked at everything within a one mile radius. And we did this with the goal of protecting not only whiting, but those outlying fields from incompatible development or encroachment, like housing. 2004, we adopted and implemented the Joint Land Use Study recommendations to buffer NAS whiting field from encroachment. Today, more than 6,000 acres have been acquired outside the fence line at whiting field and around outlying fields, and we couldn't have done that without Senator Broxson, Representative Williamson, continuing to support funding of the Defense Infrastructure Grant Program coming out of Tallahassee. Um, next. I am next. I got the thing. I pointed it at the screen. I don't know if that worked. But okay. 2009, we finalized a limited access use agreement between Navy and Santa Rosa County, and this was extremely important to give the county access to the 267 acres that uh, Dr. Harper was talking about for the Whiting Aviation Park. I personally spent six years going back and forth from Chamuckla, Florida to the Pentagon to try to get the limited access use agreement signed. And this is the only joint land, I mean, limited access use agreement between a local government and the Navy. Now, the Air Force has others, but the Navy, this is the first and only one between local government and the Navy, and that gives us access to the 6,000-foot runway at South Field in order to bring helicopters and airplanes through that fence for more efficient repair at Whiting Field. Very quickly, 2009, uh, the Whiting Aviation Park Master Plan was completed and adopted by the Santa Rosa County Board of County Commissioners. 2012 participated and adopted, fellow Okaloosians, adopted Eglin Joint Land Use Study, recommendations involving Santa Rosa County. There's a strong military presence coming out of Eglin up the Yellow River Ravine, those flight patterns. It was important for Santa Rosa County to adopt our Joint Land Use Study along those Eglin flight patterns as well as we had done Whiting Field, and we did so. 2013, negotiations are underway with a prospective tenant. 2016, which was last year basically, we updated the joint land use study, hired a, a co commercial person to come in and look at all the work we've done, what we have left to do, with new emphasis on our outlying fields, which we are currently doing. Thank you, Congressman. That's why he's younger. Thank you. Than, and we'll that's, why he's, that's why he's younger than I am. I'm not finished yet, sir. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought you were done. <laughs> I was Sorry. talking about the remote. Okay. I'm probably going in here. The NS Whiting Field Santa Rosa County Partnership is recognized by the Navy as the Santa Rosa model for encroachment prevention and is recommended to other Navy facilities. It's nice for us to go to, to the Pentagon, to Washington, D.C., and visit with Congressman Gates, along with Admiral Kelly and others, and hear uh, the flag officers in the Navy talking about Whiting Field Santa Rosa County model we are recognized as a model when it comes to buffering out base. I'll end there. I have other information and handouts as well. I just want to once again uh, thank Congressman Gates. And y'all remember, Whiting Field isn't just Whiting Field. It's 12 outlying fields throughout Santa Rosa County, Escambia County, and South Alabama. So thank you, Congressman, for everything you do and uh, all the support you give us, and we look forward to a continued, very positive, strong relationship. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. And, and the outlying field comment you made was a perfect segue into my first question at, for Captain Murray. What I'm going to do is I'm going I'm to throw out a, an argument and ask you to attack it for me. This is not an argument we hear with great frequency, but uh, it's one that I always want to make. It's always better to be prepared than unprepared. So for the sake of myself and my staff, if someone were to make the argument that we can consolidate all of this training at Rucker for the, uh, for the roto wing, uh, roto aircraft, and do it all there and save a bunch of money and have all the same capabilities, uh, is there any specific advice you'd, you'd give to our staff as to why 
uh, Commissioner Salter's point about the outlying fields and the specific opportunities for training that we have here in Santa Rosa and throughout Northwest Florida would be unique that we would want to surrender. Absolutely. In fact, uh, I believe back in 1991 when I was a flight student, there were folks that were milling about up at Whiting Field uh, discussing that same sort of thing about consolidating our training with Rucker. Uh, well, first of all, I would tell you that uh, the way we train uh, for the Navy, the Marine Corps, and the Coast Guard mission is different uh, than the way uh, they train up at Rucker. Um, as far as uh, the way we're distributed, uh, the different outlying landing fields around here, and the, the types of training that we do, uh, it wouldn't be conducive for us to try to relocate uh, to Rucker. Um, their, uh, their focus is different than ours, um, and I would tell you that uh, our ability to uh, continue training with our instructors as opposed to having, uh, in many cases, uh, civilians come back uh, and train our, uh, our student naval aviators. Uh, I believe that it takes a little bit of the uh, experience uh, and the relevance combat recency that we benefit from, uh, from having uh, our instructor cadre be uh, fleet tested, fleet proven, and, and most recently just coming back from the fleet. Do any of our advisors here seek recognition for a question or a comment? Admiral Kelly, you're recognized. I think they've got they've got a, a microphone for you there, so we can all get the benefit of your. Is it on? Yes. I'd, I'd like to go back to a comment that you made about the NDAA and the replacements for the hel helicopters here. Is it your sense that the Navy has now bought into the strategy of buying a, a, a contract system to train pilots yes. instead of a new? It is. Yes. That's a big deal. I agree. And I think that it increases the importance of creating the opportunities for, for private, to leverage the private sector. Yeah, what, uh, what, what kind of timeline are we looking at? And why did the Senate take the language out? Well, the Senate took the, the funding out, uh, the million dollars, yeah. to accelerate the effort. Um, I don't know why they did that, but our expectation is that within 12 months, the, the Navy has to present to us their plan for a commercial alternative. Congressman, thank you. Uh, Jim Heald, for those people who don't know who I am. Uh, the question I've got is probably more directed to uh, Representative Williamson and, and uh, Senator Broxson. Uh, Florida has been recognized in the past as being uh, extremely military friendly, uh, but we appear to be losing some of our traction in, in some of the efforts that are going on. I look at Hill Air Force Base uh, that has partnered with the local community and the federal government to put uh, things inside the fence line that are joint use. Uh, I look up at Grand Forks and see the same thing. I look down at San Antonio and see the same thing, and yet what Florida has done has uh, changed the laws to say that the defense grants, the defense infrastructure grants and things along those lines cannot be used inside the uh, defense line. I think that's putting the state of Florida at a uh, disadvantage when playing against these other states. So the question that I have for you, is there anything that can be done to make us more competitive as we are trying to protect these military missions? Colonel Hield, is it your understanding that that's a statutory prohibition against the spending in that way, or has there been some interpretation? Oh, okay. Yeah. If, if, if you have any specific knowledge of that. And I think, Senator Broxson, you may have a little bit of knowledge on that since he serves on the Defense Task Force. I know that last year, there was some comprehensive package that was put together on things that Florida could do to um, to set ourselves up better for to become more military friendly. And I know the task force worked on that, and it was a commitment that I know my office has made and the senator has made to, to work towards that. And, and I will make that commitment now that I would do anything that we can do to confirm our partnership with the military. But Senator Broxham may have more specifics on that. Um, specific language because it came from the defense task force are you are you speaking uh, particularly the housing or other uh... no no these are the de the defense infrastructure grant it's a grant program that was set up in statute and and I don't recall encountering this specific issue of inside versus outside 
but I think, I think it was in the law before we were elected to the legislature. What I would suggest is that maybe you take back to the task force chairman the feedback that we're hearing here that in other places they have that flexibility and see if the task force then could make a recommendation to the legislature to maybe enhance that flexibility for us. There may be good reasons why, um, why it is the case that it is, but it would certainly require that, that review. That's absolutely the best way to do it. This, this past year, the task force gave several recommendations to the legislature. We passed, I think, about 90%. So I will take that message back to the task force, and we'll try to make it make sure it's in our legislative package for the coming year. I know when I was on the task force, there was some talk that people would not win for a competitive defense infrastructure grant and so they would be back before the task force as kind of like a second round and I know there was some desire to try to create more clarity as to which types of projects fit in which categories and so it may, it may be something where behind the line digs can't do it but the task force can I don't know but it would be worthy of, of a look so thank you for referencing that Colonel Hill. Just, just to clarify, I don't believe it is necessarily a defense task force uh, problem. It's in the actual state. Yeah, it's uh, in the statute. Statutes, but, but what I think you heard from Representative Williamson and from Senator Broxson is one of the fastest ways to get that statute changed is, is a look from the task force since that's where we assemble the experts on those questions. Any other comments, questions from the dais here? So good afternoon. Uh, I just wanted to uh, uh, sort of say thank you because what, what we have here in the room today is this, this great amalgamation of federal, state, and local politicians, supporters, uh, veterans, and, and, and folks that are here because it is important and because one of you all have asked us to be here. So. Uh, thank you for uh, your leadership in getting that sort of a body together. Uh, it's great to see, uh, and I'm happy to be here. I also know that, uh, uh, Mark, good to see you. It's been a different outfit today, but um, when we were last together, uh, Congressman Gates had brought down the Navy Undersecretary of Defense for facility management, and, uh, and, and there was some good momentum there. Um, another... Again, great, great working together and, and ability to leverage the government. What I have for you all is what are, the, what are the vulnerabilities that those of us sitting on this side of the table can help you all with in, in your sort of continued struggle to, to make sure that, that Whiting Field remains a, as viable and vibrant as, as it could possibly be? Terry, I know that, that the task force does a SWOT analysis of the various installations. And so if one thing we could do is if we could get that SWOT analysis as it relates to, frankly, all of the Northwest Florida installations, I know that our team would very much like a chance to, to have that at our disposal. If there's anything specific from that analysis, we'd have you comment on it, and then we'd probably go to Captain Murray for any, any feedback. Uh, Congressman Gates, we completed a re-SWOT. Uh, last year, so 2017, so it's uh, relatively current. That is uh, amalgamated basically into the task force strategic plan. So the, the tasks that basically came out of that are online on our website for the task force. If you go to our uh, 2018 strategic plan, that stuff's all there. Um, we validated that not only with the individual base commanders and their staffs, but also with the communities. Uh, before we published it in March. So it's, uh, it is new, it's out there, it's been updated uh, recently through the, our association with the Principi Group. I think it's a really good document uh, as a good starting spot. Of course, it's a living document. We update it every year. And uh, if there's anything that comes out of this that we need to adjust, we'll have to. Was there anything specific as it related to, to the Whiting mission or, or any of the Northwest Florida missions on the SWOT analysis that, that you can share with us? Uh, well, the biggest thing, obviously, for Northwest Florida and the Panhandle is the Gulf Range. Uh, mm -hmm. Obviously, it's not specifically affected by uh, uh, the mission here at Whiting because the training aspect isn't really a problem. It's mostly the test side. Uh, but that, that is an anchor for Northwest Florida military bases. And, and quite honestly, if we didn't have the test range, there's not a lot of reason to have all the bases that we have up here here uh, because they'd have to go somewhere else for training. In, for, in that SWOT analysis, as it relates to the test range, which I agree, in the absence of the test range, you lose the foundational element of the, um, of the military's 
strong presence here. How do you, what is your treatment of offshore oil drilling in that SWOT analysis? Uh, we think that it should be limited and the military mission line should be sustained uh, indefinitely would be best uh, for at least for a lot longer uh, is required. The reason is because uh, the, the ability, you know, Congress has put in a lot of money, even just in the last two years, in updating that range. Uh, that money, if we get drilling, is kind of wasted because we'll lose the ability to execute what we need to do out there. Uh, we've advocated, and the task force has advocated, in fact, Senator Broxton sponsored a resolution from the Florida legislature last year, and the House uh, likewise, uh, on the, exactly that point, that we should indefinitely extend the MML uh, in the Gulf Range. And, and I can tell you from, from our colleagues, it is very, very important to have unanimity in the voice of the state and local governments as it relates to this drilling question. And I think Terry puts a good point on the fact that, um, that drilling is incompatible with that mission as we understand it. And to every extent we can invest a dollar in that range today, that serves as kryptonite, hopefully, yes. for drilling in the future. But Especially as you look at hypersonics. Sure. Uh, wanted wanted to give uh, give you, uh, Captain Murray, and also Commissioner Salter, a chance to respond to Colonel Carrillo's question about any any vulnerabilities, any sources of irritation. Um, you know, I know each of you referenced land acquisition and buffering programs that we've been working on for quite some time. Um, are we are we there on those, or is there additional work to be done um, in response? Uh. Congressman, there's additional work to be done. If you look at the map around Whiting Field, it initially laid out about 25,000 acres that uh, needed to be purchased or protected. Uh, we're probably about, we're approaching 7,000 now, and we're starting to do a lot of more work around our outlying fields. If you look at uh, OLF Pace, which is north of Pace, uh, we recently purchased a 160-acre conservation easement there. We're in the process of negotiating conservation easements for another 80 acres or so up OLF Pace. Uh, Escobano Point, some years back, we worked closely with the state uh, EPA to support 2,200 acres down there to support and buffer OLF Choctaw. So the work continues. It's going to continue to go on for quite some time. I would say that going back, looking at the SWOT analysis that the state had, had done for Whiting Field, Number one, and this is what we explained to you, Congressman, and you've done a great job to get funding for it, was the uh, North Tower, and that's, that's on target now. Secondly, in order for us to grow at Whiting Field and continue to be competitive, number two would probably be a new parallel runway uh, on the base as well. So those are the type two top pro uh, priorities. Congressman's working on the uh, air traffic control tower. We now need support on the... Uh, additional runway. Thank you. Thank you. That's very good feedback. Well, uh, Commissioner Salter, uh, your words are exactly what we've been touting for an awful long time at Whiting Field is the incredible support that we have uh, with Santa Rosa County. Uh, from my perspective as, as the uh, former wing uh, commander, I'll tell you that the messaging is uh, the most important part. Uh, messaging about why we do uh, what we do and why it's important. Uh, a consistent, credible message uh, supported by our lawmakers and by uh, the Department of the Navy is critical. And I think that's one of the, the factors in why we've been so successful successful dating back to 1991, um, the entire length of my career. Um, so I would, uh, I would say that uh, continue that engagement. Uh, if there's any sense uh, of uh, risk for wedding, uh, I'd ask that uh, continue to, to engage with the Department of the Navy, get that support, uh, both also with us here in the local community. But uh, this is exactly why uh, um, I decided to, to pursue the opportunity to, to serve here in this county because of the support that we get and uh, feel very blessed to be part of the team. Thank you. Dan, did you have anything to add? Uh, just the only thing that I would add is uh, great work, Amy. I was really impressed by uh, listening to your report. I'd like to dig into it, uh, the expansion of like, Fort, Fort was Christie. And I really think the way forward for Whiting Field is to keep joint this. And if you take a look at the overall survivability of bases, Joint base Woods McCord, where they are, uh, they're, they're combining these bases, and the expansion of Dothan would fit into a, a, like a little micro of that, if they would, and, and just I think the establishment of a FARC uh, for them to conduct uh, some type of like long rain or run type <coughs> event uh, might be advantageous as to phasing in that that type of expansion. But jointness is, is, is really the key, I think. 
No, it's a, it's a great point. It's also not lost on a lot of folks advancing their military careers that that's how you earn the next rank is more and more that's tied to joint service. Uh, absolutely. Uh, Commissioner Williamson, if we were going to come down the line, if you had anything to add, or Sheriff Johnson, anything to add? Uh, you keeping them safe out there at White? Yeah, we're trying to. We, uh, we work a lot with them, and I'll tell you, uh, Captain Bowditch, the new commander out there, is outstanding. I related to him that we were having a problem finding a place to do our EVOC training, emergency vehicle operation. He stepped up, he called two weeks later and said, hey, we've got a place out at uh, one of our OLFs that you can use, and he, he kind of wired it off just for us, and um, we have a great cooperation with them. We do a cookout for the, the guys and gals at the base once a year for military appreciation, and we go out there and we uh, get with their security forces and do some active shooter exercises. Our SWAT goes out there, so we work great with them, and I, I tell you, they're a huge part and me being a military veteran, I can tell you this, uh, they're, they're a great part of Santa Rosa County and we're proud to have them here. So thank you. Thank you, Sheriff. Rob, okay. Sam, anything to add? I just thank you for uh, hosting the event. And as Commissioner Salter stated, I, I know from uh, all the way from the time where, where you've campaigned and, and we have definitely seen the fruits of, of your labor uh, as you've been uh, from from what was a, a, a rookie class of a, a lot of new uh, elected officials and, and uh, I, I kind of say that in all humility with myself and even like uh, Representative Williamson to uh, rising through the ranks of, of now I believe a, a national uh, garnered congressman where a lot of people do look to you and I and, uh, appreciate all you've done on behalf of Santa Rosa County and, and we definitely appreciate um, the base and its mission and, and I think it's always good uh, even as a guy that's lived here my whole life, as a refresher, every time we get to have a meeting, even like the, the gala that they had a few weeks ago, it is just a nice refresher to remember uh, the importance that that plays in our everyday lives, uh, even like some of the things Amy mentioned, just the amount of, of sheer students uh, and, and other things throughout the community that revolve around the mission of Whiting Field. So thank you for hosting that and answering questions and, and fighting on behalf of uh, our county and, and our military to um, strengthen the national mission. Thank you. Commissioner Cole. Well, thank you very much for hosting this today and, and welcome to our dais. I would like to say something. When Mark indicated that as your student here, you really don't have a heads up. As a young Navy guy getting stationed at Whitingfield, you don't have a heads up. But now sitting here as a county commissioner, my, many years later, you realize, and I think part of what uh, Rob indicated, how can we help? Well, all this jargon we've been talking about in, in protecting Whitingfield and what Congress can do and the state can do and everything, but it's what our citizens can do. Mm -hmm. And keeping our citizens educated to the fact that with no Whitingfield, there be no Williamson Electric. There be no Sam Parker selling houses. There be no Bob Cole Automotive. Be no Piggly Wiggly. No grocery stores, carpet stores, recreational companies. They'd all go away. And, uh, and it's because what we've seen over the years, the downsizing of Monsanto and Cyanamide and all these different things that our president's working hard to bring back into our country and build our economy back up, but that's going to take time. So it becomes more and more and more important that we protect Whiting Field because of the economic impact it would have and educating young people and new people in their county that just because you have a job today, you may not if Whiting Field wasn't here. And I think that's the job of all of us. Thank you. So I just wanted to add, I, I think the Defense Community Infrastructure Program you mentioned at the end of your um, opening remarks um, provides one of those unique opportunities to take the, the federal level um, dollars, um, tie them to the state level and local level dollars with Triumph and, and, and even take Whiting Aviation Park beyond the phase one that we have an approved grant for to a phase two or a phase three. So that's one piece that I'm watching closely in the NDAA and, and on the appropriation side to make sure that uh, money that's there sticks. We will uh, 
kidnap whoever we have to and hold anyone's favorite dogs and cats hostage uh, I'll, through I'll that send appropriations you some names, process. Sir. I got a few uh, names for you. There you go. Well, uh, well, thank you all for for your attention. We will do this from time to time. We'll get together uh, around different issue sets or around different installations so that we can work on a combined strategy. Uh, the big takeaways that I have, that I know members of my staff have, not only relate to some of the technical items we've discussed today, but but the importance of this intergovernmental cooperation from the county supporting us on the drilling question and on highlighting the Whiting project as the key triumph project. That, that takes discipline and focus and appreciate you doing that. From Senator Broxson and Representative Williamson drawing those state resources to our area and then focusing them on the points of greatest leverage and then to whatever extent our team can be a part of ensuring that the federal government does its part and that we're positioned for the movements of the Pentagon as the national defense strategy changes, as the approach to this type of aviation training evolves. We want to make sure we're on the front end of that evolution. Thank you to all of our presenters, to my advisors and staff, to everyone with Santa Rosa County uh, who helped make this happen. And this concludes our field hearing on Whiting Field. Thank you.